Maybe you like your music really loud. Maybe you like your music really clean. Either way, understanding decibels will help you get what you want out of your system. DB is short for decibel. It's a unit of measure. It's a tenth of a bell. More on that later. Keep watching to find out. Decibels can be confusing. In order to simplify things, I like breaking them down into two broad categories. The first are the decibels we actually hear. Decibels of SPL. DBs of SPL measure differences in pressure. The other type measures differences in power. The transition between the two happens right here at the speaker, along with any resonators you might include like a port or a passive radiator. Everything from the speaker terminals all the way back through the amplifier, the signal processors, the source unit, the original recording, all the way to the microphone that recorded the music. Those dBs are all measures of relative power levels in your system. Everything from the speaker to your ear is a measure of relative pressure. We call this dBs of SPL, and it's a lot more complicated than dBs of power because of the way that sound interacts with the environment. You may have heard that if you double the cone area by adding a second driver, you're going to double your SPL. What's actually going on is by adding a second cone, you're doubling the acoustic power. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get exactly three more dB of SPL because what you actually get is going to be a function of the environment that the speaker is playing in. More on that later. But first, let's take a look at some ways that we can measure dB in terms of signal power. The most important thing to understand is that dBs are always measured relative to some known quantity. In other words, there's some starting point and dBs are expressed as changes from that starting point. One of the measures we can use is dBV or dB voltage. This tells us how decibels change as a result of a change in the voltage. One volt will give us zero dB. A dBW, on the other hand, which stands for decibels watts, tells us how decibels change when power changes. One watt of power will give us zero dBW. Another one is dBFS, which stands for decibels full scale. This is what we're using whenever we're using a zero dB test tone in order to set our gains. 0 dB full scale is defined as the clipping point for a digital audio signal. So no digital audio recording should ever be above 0 dB full scale. There are a lot of other measures you could also use. I'll give you some links down in the description so you can look those up if you'd like. But for now, what I want to do is go to some examples of dB voltage and dB watts. So here's the formula for using watts to calculate decibels. Now, a lot of times math scares people off, but sometimes I get viewers who will ask to see more of the math, and that's what inspired this video. I try really hard to read and respond to all of your comments because, well, they matter to me. What I'm going to do now is take this formula and break it down in terms that are really easy to understand. This math isn't actually all that hard. It's just a matter of knowing what to plug into a calculator. P0 is the starting power, so that is the beginning point, our reference. And then P1 is the ending power. You might be going, say, for example, from 1 watt up to 2 watts. So in that case, P0 is 1 watt and P1 is 2 watts. So in this example, we're doubling the power from 1 watt to 2 watts. So 2 divided by 1 is just 2, and then you pull up a calculator, and the calculator will give you the base 10 logarithm of 2, which is 0.3 with a bunch of big long decimals behind it. So you multiply that number by 10 and that rounds to 3. So you may have heard someone say that when you double the power, you gain 3 decibels. Or if you want to gain 3 decibels, you have to double your power. And that's exactly what the formula has shown us. So as an example, the difference between 1 watt and 100 watts, well, 100 divided by 1 is 100. The logarithm of 100 is 2. And 2 times 10 is 20. So going from 1 watt up to 100 watts will gain you 20 decibels. Earlier in the video, I told you that a decibel was one-tenth of a bell. That's where the 10 comes from in this formula. This unit of measure was developed by researchers at Bell Labs. You know, the telephone company, Bell? And they named it after Alexander Graham Bell. They were looking for ways to quantify the signal drop that you get over at telephone lines. The logarithm part of the formula is just there to scale 
that change in signal into something that we as human beings can recognize with our ears. In fact, one decibel is the smallest amount of change in sound level that a human being can hear. The people at Bell Labs actually did a surprising amount of research on sound reproduction, which kind of makes sense because they were trying to reproduce sound on telephone lines. They actually held the patent for the ported enclosure. Now this right here is the formula for dB voltage or dBV. This formula is really handy for doing things like setting gain overlaps and setting up your crossovers. In fact, I'll show you exactly how that works a little bit later. The formula for dBV is almost exactly the same as the formula for dBW. The only difference is, is that you use voltages in the formula instead of watts, and you multiply by 20 instead of 10. And just going through the math like we did before, it turns out that if you double the voltage, you gain 6 dB. So let's say that you measure the voltage your amplifier was putting out, and it's putting out 5 volts. If you crank the amplifier until it puts out 10 volts, you just plug the numbers in the formula. 10 divided by 5 is 2. The logarithm of 2 is 0.3. 20 times 0.3 is 6. So anytime you double the voltage, you increase by 6 dB. Keep watching and I'll show you how to use that to set crossovers and gain overlaps. But before we do that, let's talk about dBs of SPL. dBs of SPL is not based on power, it's based on pressure. Zero dB of SPL would be complete silence. And when there's complete silence, the amount of pressure is 0.0000. .00 zero, zero, two newtons per meter squared. Now, I don't know what a newton per meter squared is, and it's a really tiny number, so it doesn't make any sense to me. So if I converted it to something that would make sense, and when I converted that number to pounds per square inch, I got this tiny little number with nine zeros behind the decimal place which is basically virtually no pressure whatsoever. And that kind of makes sense. If there's no pressure against your eardrum, your eardrum doesn't move. And so you can't perceive any sound. And it turns out the formula is the exact same formula we use for voltage. You just use pressure instead of voltage in the formula. And what that means is that if you double the pressure, you're gonna get six more dBs of SPL. Here's where things start to get really complicated. You might think that adding more power means your stereo can be louder, and that is absolutely true. As you add more power, you'll have more dBWs, and that will lead to more pressure, which will lead to more dB SPL. But there's not some one-to-one -one correspondence, and that's because the pressure is gonna be a function of the environment that you're in. In car audio competitions, the SPL competitors oftentimes will brace their vehicles and fill their doors with things like concrete. They do this in order to keep the body panels from flexing. That flexing means that the pressure is being used to push out on the car instead of push on the pressure sensor that they use to measure SPL. If your roof is flexing, you're losing SPL. If you lose half of your pressure, you lose 6 dBs of SPL. And that's one reason why it's really hard to hit big SPL numbers. It's very hard to generate those massive amounts of pressure inside of a car. And here's an experiment you can run on your own to understand how the environment contributes to the pressure. Most people find that when you take a subwoofer, fire it backwards and move it to the very rear of the trunk, you know, right in the way where you can't put a darn thing in the trunk, you'll get a whole lot more bass. What you're doing here is you're taking advantage of a thing called cabin gain. The idea is to position the subwoofer in a way that creates a standing wave right at the listening position, thus increasing the pressure at the listening position, giving you more dBs of SPL at the listening position. Now you can take this to an extreme. If you look at the outlaw SPL competitions, they'll oftentimes put the pressure sensor down in the passenger side kick panel. This is done because that's a spot where the standing waves tend to build up in a lot of vehicles. And it's not just a car thing. You can take advantage of the environment in your home theater system. In fact, the best way to figure out the optimal placement of your subwoofer in a home theater setup is to put your subwoofer at your listening position and then get on the floor and crawl around the room and look for a spot where the bass is louder. Then move the subwoofer to that spot. Now there are two main things I want you to take away from this. The first thing is that adding more power is subject to diminishing returns for several reasons. One reason is because of the logarithmic scale that we use to measure dB. And the other reason is that there may be environmental constraints holding you back. And it's always going to be cheaper 
cheaper to move your subwoofer around than it is to double your power. The second is that with a little bit of math and some pretty basic tools, you can set up your crossovers and your gain overlaps yourself. To learn how to do that, click on this video right here. And if you enjoy this kind of content, you can support it by clicking on this link right here and joining me on Patreon. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons, especially my $10 patrons right here and $25 patrons Dylan, Bo, and Baba.